Hi, this is Richard Silverstein of Tikkun Olam uh, speaking to you on behalf of Israel Social TV. The Mossad kidnapped a Gazan in Sinai last week. The kidnapping victim had gone to a hospital near Cairo with his wife to seek medical attention for his child. Reuters reported that he received a phone call from a quote-unquote friend causing him to leave his family and travel to Raha. That was the last his family heard of him till it received a phone call saying that he'd been kidnapped by Israel. This incident is reminiscent of the 2010 Mossad kidnapping of Gaza civil engineer Dirar Abu Sisi in the Ukraine. Abu Sisi remains in prison held in solitary confinement against his Israeli agreements with Hamas and without trial two years after his apprehension. The Gazan uh, that we're talking about who was just kidnapped according to Gaza media, was formerly affiliated with Islamic Jihad, but now is affiliated with another group called Al-Quds Defenders. This is not the first reported violation of Egyptian sovereignty by Israeli forces. In fact, the IDF attacked and killed five Egyptian policemen inside Egypt after the Eilat terror attack. The Mossad reportedly kidnapped another Gazan last year and assassinated yet a third Gaza militant in the Sinai. This has now become an extension of Israeli territory and certainly within Israel's sphere of influence. What's astonishing is that the Mossad operates inside Egypt with the willing collaboration of Egyptian intelligence. In fact, my confidential Israeli source relayed an almost boastful acknowledgement that harkened back to a disastrous kidnapping operation uh, of Dirar Abu Sisi. Quote, as far as Mossad is concerned, the only difference between Cairo and Kiev is that the name of the river in Egypt's capital is the Nile, and in Ukraine's capital it, it is the Dnieper, unquote. The hubris of this statement exposes the reckless instincts of Israel's covert spy agency. Just as it killed the wrong man in Lilihammer and kidnapped Abu Sisi after being fooled by Hamas into believing he knew where Gilad Shalit was held, and was caught with its pants down after snuffing out the life of Mahmoud al-Mabuch in Dubai, it will continue behaving rashly. It will continue violating the sovereignty of any state, anywhere, for what it perceives to be its interests and its advantage. If these individuals kidnapped or murdered in Sinai by Mossad were guilty of any acts of terror, one could understand Egypt's wanting to be rid of them. But do it yourself. Why farm out your own intelligence operations on your own soil to foreign agencies? Frankly, I'm shocked that Egyptians aren't more exercised by this. Of course, they are presently distracted by a few minor matters like a coup d'etat, so one can understand why this incident hasn't gained more traction. But if countries want to rein in the Mossad's overweening ambition to make the entire world its battlefield in the cause of combating Palestinian militancy, they'll have to take more aggressive action than they have till now. I've created a Facebook cause for the kidnapped Gazan, which is linked at my website. Please like it and share it with others. This has been Richard Silverstein of Tikkun Olam for Israel Social TV. Good night.